This is Matthew of Another World Terraria, where I teach and inspire you on the topics of rare plants and artistic nature displays. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the Forest's Edge Kusamono. I found this one-of-a-kind handmade tray at a bonsai supply shop. I was immediately drawn to it because of its unique shape, simplicity, and imperfect rustic look. The tray is about 14 inches long by 5 inches front to back by 1.5 inches tall. Here's a close-up of the wood hardscape. This piece was perfect for this build because the larger stump-like base on the left and the crooked branch portion sticking off to the right side helped create a balanced yet dramatic composition that perfectly complements the oblong container. What might surprise you is that this is actually two separate pieces of wood that I combined together in order to create the exact shape and look that I was going for. I did the exact same thing in my Wabi Kusa dish garden. You can check out the video of how I made that if you're interested. Combining multiple pieces of wooden rocks together to look like a single piece that is more interesting and dramatic is something I encourage you to explore. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video that gives a bunch of tips and tricks for how to do that successfully. Next, I had to secure the wood at exactly the right height and horizontal location within the tray. In this case, mounting the wood was a requirement because of the shape of the wood and the horizontal arrangement which wouldn't allow it to stand up by itself. Plastic lighting grid or egg crate as it's known is a great material for building frameworks and structures that can be used to help position as well as attach wood into your designs. In this case I used three layers of grid as you can see here to raise the wood to just the right level. Some of the small black zip ties like the one over here to the far left also go through the holes in the bottom of the tray and are used to secure the entire framework in place. Here's a close up of one of the zip ties going through the hole. In a minute I'll show you the bottom of the tray and how it attaches. The larger white zip tie creates a loop through the drainage hole in the tray and it wraps around a vinyl screw that you can see coming across right there. In this bottom view, you can see that these small black zip ties hold the entire framework in place. Note that I just used the heads of the zip ties to lock it in because they are larger than the holes and don't go through, so I didn't need to have the entire zip tie looping around the bottom like you would expect. Here you can see the vinyl screw which spans the drainage hole, creating an anchor which I attached the larger zip tie to. This just adds a bit more stability to the mount. I wedged a small rock under the wood up here because the branch wasn't sitting at the exact angle that I wanted and it was also wobbling up and down a little bit. So the rock holds it in place at the right spot and makes it a little bit more firm. I looped a large zip tie between the two pieces of wood and threw a gap and then below that used more zip ties to attach it to the base. Here's a good view behind the scenes of how things are all attached. Note that the large zip tie just loops around the wood and then I used smaller zip ties to attach that to the grid. I did this because it was easier to control where the small black zip ties attached and to get them looped around the grid. I also wrapped more zip ties around the wood wherever I could so that I could make a more firm connection. For example, this zip tie right here that goes around that piece of wood sticking out and then attaches to the grid right here. One trick is if you want to use zip ties to attach wood to something like I'm doing here but you can't find any attachment points to wrap the zip ties around, you can just drill a hole in the wood and stick the zip tie through the hole. Lastly, in this photo, you can see some epoxy right here and right here, which was also used to glue the two pieces of wood together. Here's a shot of the finished hardscape in the tray. You can see that by using a combination of this rock, the grid, zip ties, and so on, I was able to position the wood exactly where I wanted it and exactly the right angle. By the way, I just want to thank you for all of the likes, comments, and shares. It really means a lot to me, and I appreciate your support. If you enjoy my videos, please keep those likes and comments up, and I'll keep making more. I lined this part of the tray with Hygrolon, which is a synthetic fabric that wicks water and moisture. I did this so that it would help keep the substrate evenly moist across this entire area, and also to act as a barrier so that the substrate won't fall through the drainage holes. Speaking of substrate, it might surprise you to learn that I used clay for this build. I used a clay substrate for a few reasons. Firstly, because I wanted something that would last a really long time and wouldn't decompose. Second, I had a gut instinct that the plants that I wanted to use in this build would like the clay. And third, I wanted to experiment and see what would happen. The clay substrate that you see here is a mix of red pottery clay, peat moss, and crushed Fluval Stratum Aquarium substrate. I added the peat to the clay to give it a more firm texture, and I added the fluval because it has minerals in it that would be beneficial to the plants, and also because fluval tends to sprout out a really nice type of moss that I like. 
Next, I planted the kusumono. My vision for the forest's edge kusumono was to emulate a tree stump in the space where a woodland forest meets an open meadow on an early summer day. That's why I went with a grassy looking plant and then a simple field of moss around it. Since I prefer simplicity and it was important for this piece, I didn't use a lot of plants and I kept it to just a few species. I wanted a heavier planting at the base on the left, which creates a visual anchor and also creates balance against the longer tray portion heading off to the right. I didn't want to put any plants on the right for two reasons. First reason is that, as noted, I was going for simplicity and I just wanted the right side to be a field of moss. And the second reason is that if I put plants on the right, it would have ruined the balance of the composition because they would have visually created too much weight on the right side and because they would interfere with the flow of the branch portion jutting over. This grassy looking plant here is Juncus repens, which is from the group of plants known as rushes. I really like the light, airy, natural appearance that it gives to the composition and that textural contrast with the stump. Quickly, I want to point out that I made a mistake when initially planting this of putting this piece of grass right here. This interrupts the visual flow of the piece and essentially ruins the entire composition. I tried to explain in detail why that is and explain the concepts, but it ended up taking too much time and it was too complicated. So I may have to make some future videos that focus specifically on visual flow and other artistic concepts. From this angle, you can see that I meticulously planted a bunch of moss plugs all over the clay substrate around the display, and that I also put some other mosses on the wood in natural crevices where it looked like moss would naturally grow. All of these black blobs right here is Fluval Stratum Aquarium substrate. I had a deli container full of it, and I had this moss that grows out of the Fluval Stratum naturally, so I just took all of that and stuck it across the surface so that it would fill in. Here's the newly planted kusumono piece in a 20 gallon long aquarium which I converted into a kusumono growing tank. The majority of the lid on the tank is glass because I wanted to keep the humidity up. However, I did want a little bit of ventilation so I made a custom ventilation strip. I built this out of window screen frame and window screen. Here's a close up of the moss field at about three weeks after initial planting. You can see there's already some new growth and it's starting to fill in. This shot is also at about three weeks, and it shows how much the Junkus repens has grown, as well as the moss that I put all over the stump. While I was taking these update photos, I decided it was a good opportunity to rip out that poorly placed piece of Junkus repens that I had right here originally. It was a huge relief after I ripped that out because I felt like the composition improved dramatically, even without any other plant in that spot just yet. This shot is about two and a half months after initial planting. You can see that I filled that old blank space where the Junkus repens was with a small flowering plant that adds some variety and further creates the feeling of a woodland scene. Here's a close up of this awesome miniature plant, which is a type of tuberous gesneriad known as Syningia muscacola. This used to be known as Syningia species Rio dos Pedros based on the location that it was discovered in Brazil. The Syningia would not like to grow directly in the clay substrate, so I removed a chunk of clay and moss from this area, and then I put a bed of sphagnum moss in, and then planted the Syningia in that sphagnum. Then I put a little bit more moss around it so that it would grow in and then hide all of that. The display photo here is about six and a half months after initial planting. If you enjoyed this video, I have more videos you can watch which show how I made other terrariums, Wabi Kusa, and more. Check out my behind the scenes builds playlist.